Welcome to our latest edition of the Showbox Sire series, The Evolution of the Great Cow, with the introduction of our new bulls to the Showbox Sires lineup. Today, we have got guests on to talk about our newest release at Select Sires, 744HO17425, Hellion, a bull that we're very excited about. And our guests today are two people behind this bull that have put a lot into the cow families and the breeding decisions to make this bull. So it's my pleasure to welcome, uh, first of all, Jeff King from King's Ransom Farm, who's involved with both the top and bottom side of this pedigree, and my partner, Mike Duckett from Showbox Sires, who, again, has been very instrumental in this mating and is going to talk a little about his thoughts on the on the mating. So we're going to kick this off. Uh, welcome, Mike and Jeff. We appreciate you being on. And Mike, I'll let you take it away. Uh, thanks for being on, Jeff. A couple of years ago, you invested a lot of money in Doc 8784, you and your partners. What made you do this? We're glad you did, but what, what were your thoughts when you did this? Well, honestly, uh, some of my friends would have uh, accused alcohol as to having a, a big part, playing a big part into making me do that. But, you know, honestly, there were a few reasons. And we, we thought about it for quite a while. Uh, when I first saw Doc in person the year before as a second caver at World Dairy Expo, I was just blown away. And to me, she was the perfect young cow. We, I love the pedigree, love the cow herself. And the word on the street at the time was she's never going to be for sale. Fast forward a little ways, when she did come up for public sale, you know, we considered the idea of a partnership and we really thought that the partners that were potentially going to be involved with you and Julie and uh, Tim and Sharon, and then my partners here in New York, we really thought that that'd be an interesting partnership where everybody brought something to the table. So we liked the idea of the partnership, but really the biggest reason for us to invest in Doc was in my opinion, there are very few opportunities in, in your lifetime to really invest in one of the cows that's going to change the breed. We really felt it was that opportunity. It, they, they don't come along every day. And for us to have a chance to be involved in the development of not only her, but her family and her legacy has just been a real pleasure. We're happy you guys came on board. And I do remember leading her out to the wash rack and you and uh, your brothers and Googler were uh, out there and alcohol was involved and we were washing her and I think someone asked uh, and I said oh no we'll never ever sell her having a partner like Tim he twisted on my arm until he talked me into it but certainly she is a cow that I feel that she is going to change the breed unfortunate she left us a little soon but she left enough uh, offspring and stuff behind that I'm confident this cow is going to change the breed. Jeff, tell us about King's Ransom and what's going on there today, and then your partners. So our viewers, our listeners get a little bit of a view of who these guys are behind this cow. My family and I at King's Ransom, we're in eastern New York and milk about 1,300 cows, all registered. I farm here with my brother, his wife and kids, and, and then my wife and kids are also involved. I've got uh, two sons that are out of college working with us on the dairy, and the rest of them are all college age at the, at the moment. So we have a passion for developing great registered Holsteins, whether it's on the genomic side of the business or the, the type and crossover side of the business. My partners here, we decided because of business structure that AOT Genetics would own the other piece of the, of the cow. And AOT is a partnership of Tom Kugler and my brother, Dave King. Tom is, a, is, is in the semen business in the eastern part of the New York. He also owns hundreds of cattle and various types of partnerships all over and a real enthusiast of the Holstein breed. And then my brother is a dairy nutritionist. He also has his own farm, his own cattle. So they've partnered up on investment cattle over the years. Uh, and of course, the AOT prefix is very well known across a lot of different bulls in the industry and some of the great cows. We uh, both decided to throw our name into the hat when the partnership was put together. So King's Ransom is an entity and also AOT. And Jeff, take two minutes. I just had a fantastic tour one morning with your brother, Jan, of the new King's Dairy facility, King Brothers Dairy. Just give our listeners, I don't think a lot of people know that facet of your business. And to me, one of the most fascinating things we can do in this business is start to control our own destiny. And King's Ransom with your 1,300 cows 
has invested in controlling your own destiny for the value of your product. Tell us a little about that because I think it's important. We've been working on this for a number of years. We now bottle our own uh, fluid milk product right on on the farm. We've built a, an on-farm plant and then uh, have since expanded it here just in recent years. You know, our bottled milk is in about 75 grocery stores here in the region, and we're working with others outside of our local area as well. In addition to the bottled milk, our ice cream has become a popular item in the area. We've got a an on-farm ice cream parlor and a farm store. We're open year-round with that ice cream, and, and we're currently working to get some of our ice cream into the retail section of some supermarkets as well. And then finally, we co-pack some yogurt for another company. So any given week where there's quite a few gallons of milk that roll off the line, uh, a lot of three gallon tubs of ice cream and a whole lot of five ounce cups of yogurt. It's been, uh, it's, it's a whole different business, but it's been interesting and exciting to kind of be involved with over the last uh, seven, eight years. In our tour, Jeff, we were we marveled at the ingenuity you guys have used and the way you've built your plant for efficiency, uh, but practicality. And we had just an absolutely fantastic tour. And this is my promotion, and I'm predicting things will go crazy. But if you have not had King Brothers ice cream, you better find a way to get some. I think I had PBJ OMG or something like that, Jeff. And it was at about nine o'clock in the morning, and I could have eaten a gallon of it. So it was that yeah. good. Well, you had my favorite flavor, PBOMG, peanut butter. <laughs> oh my goodness. So that's uh that's one of my favorites. But we like to have fun with it along along the way. Yeah, your names are fantastic. You know, just a slight suggestion. I'd like you to start naming them after Showbox cows and bulls, but just throw that out at Becky because I know she's the wizard there. I think you'll get a you'll get a, a no-go with that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So, Mike, you're working with a lot of daughters of Doc 8784. Tell our listeners a little bit about what this cow's transmitting from a daughter's standpoint and what you're seeing. You know, how many generations is our partnership down the line now, Mike? I guess we're we're already three, Mike and Jeff. Mike, tell them what you're seeing and what's coming out for numbers, but also coming out of the real product. The very first group of two-year-olds we calved. Every one of them went very good as a two-year-old. All of them are extremely wet two-year-olds. Heifers that uh, come calved early, they got very functional udders. Cows that just fail milk. We we're calving a couple of those in for the second time. There's a Conway daughter that's really fresh. We actually have her on the show program with hopes that she might be ready to go to World Air Expo is a second calf two-year-old. There's a Parfect daughter that's due here in a couple of weeks that uh, has really developed, looks to be a, a sure excellent cow. But on the genomic side, when you get something from Doc, it's uh, it's just given there's going to be a lot of milk. The type is there. It doesn't matter if you use a uh, sidekick or a high genomic milk bowl that she's going to make milk. That's the one thing you can just count on when you go to test her daughters and her sons. So far, uh, some of the typier matings coming yet, and those calves are uh, square framed, not overly tall, open dairy rib heifers that hopefully put on tremendous udders. And I think uh, down the road here, we're going to have a few show kind of cattle from Doc. Jeff, would you add your comments to the same question? You know, what, what do you see? You watch great cow families and study them hard at King's Ransom. What do you see from the family? Well, I think Mike put it very well. Milk first and foremost. These are these are cows with great type, and they know how to milk. Uh, we're milking a couple of daughters a doc here in our herd, and I've seen a number more in some other herds. I just like the square frames. That they are consistently not the tallest cows, which I really enjoy. We milk thirteen hundred cows in a commercial environment, and they fit in our operation. A lot of width, a lot of depth. Tremendous width to the rump. The udders are unquestioned. One of the other really neat things that I think Doc brings to the pedigree uh, in a lot of these matings is great fertility, too. And so when you can combine great milk, nice fertility, and the type that the, that comes through the family again and again and again, it's so consistent in all the matings. You know, I think it's just that she's special. There's no doubt about it. So with this bull that we're getting ready to release, Jeff, it's got cows and sires that you worked with on both the top and bottom side. 
how do you see these two cow families working together and what's some of the ways you feel that these these two cow families can complement each other? Probably the cow that's caused the most commotion around our dairy here in, in just recent years is a cow named Days. She's got an interesting pedigree. She's a 94-point max scored third caver sired by Clay Nook Casper. And her pedigree goes back. Uh, it's an interesting blend of type sires and production sires. She's out of a, a 92-point Delta. Delta Destiny was recently nominated Global Cow of the Year. Next stand back's a 94-point Doorman. And behind that, a 94-point Dorsey, who actually was one of the very highest GTPI heifers when she was a young heifer in the entire breed. So we've kind of blended the sires back and forth, trying to bring, bring production and genomic ability in with some of the type that family's been known for. So Casper Days herself, she's the dam of Dropbox, and she has been a tremendous transmitter, an incredibly dairy cow, as long as a train with a, a super long neck and dairy head on her, and a tremendous, tremendous udder. If I was gonna, if I was gonna change her, I'd give her a little bit more width, and I really think that the bull high jump sire of Dropbox has brought that. We, we're milking a number of high jumps in our herd, and for me, it uh, it was a tremendously complimentary mating, and we're seeing that in the Dropbox calves. We're uh, I consistently regularly hear from people how much they enjoy the drop box calves that they, they're winning some shows but i really think at the end of the day he's going to make cows he's going to make them square it's correct uh not the tallest cattle and i think we're really going to like the udders on him and, and we're going to like him when they calve in his cows you know i've got a lot of confidence in drop box i think the mating of drop box on on uh, doc is kind of a home run We've seen a number of sisters, full sisters. I've I've got some here at my dairy, and I've seen some that are living at your, your farm, Mike. Uh, what a group of calves. What a special, special group of calves. And I think uh, when you look at the proof on Hellion, it almost ex exactly describes those calves that we see. Tremendous balance, a tremendous width, great dairy, open rib, really square cut calves. And, and you just see that in the, in the proof of Hellions. To me, the two cow families crossed together just mm. scream complimentary all the way through. I agree with you more. I remember seeing a Facebook post one time, and it was uh, in her work clothes photo that uh, CMAX guys had taken of Days. I think that's what got me and uh, Tim churning to, to work with you with Days. What two cows that the breed's seen that can combine the type, the genomics, the production, and do it so easily than Doc and, and Days. And uh, it, it just makes a, a perfect combination in my eyes. I have to laugh. Mike saw the picture on Facebook of her and her working clothes. And he had Sharon and I take the drive to Eastern New York to look at the cow. And Jeff, it wasn't nearly as fun as the day you guys were having a drink at the wash rack. It was so cold. You couldn't see the cow because you couldn't see through your breath. And there stood this cow. And Mike, when I called you about the cow, and I said she, it was almost like she was in a different county with the length of body. I've never seen a longer neck, longer bodied cow in my life with a, with a picture perfect udder in her working clothes. And at that point, Funny, Mike, you know, Jeff said the day he asked you about Doc never being for sale, he kind of told me the same thing about days. And you know what? He stuck true to his word because we've tried several times. But you and I began our love affair with days that day. Uh, and you've seen her several times, Mike, since, and, and you feel the same way. When you talk about crossover cows, days and Doc have to get right to the top of the pile uh, pretty quick. Two great cows coming together to make a great bull. So I've referenced with both of you, and I want to ask both of you this question. You know, you've seen the numbers on Hellion. He's just released from select sires. We've got people wanting to use him as a mating sire. Mike, give me two or three traits that really stick out to you about the bull. The one thing that uh, you can just bank on, and the a cow, this bull's 1,500 and some of milk and, and over three and a quarter of type, he's going to take that roll back next year and still be a great milk bull. And he's going to be a great milk bull with lots of type. And when you look at his linears, exactly what you're looking for is the right rumps, the, the right teat size, and just tremendous udders and A2, A2, all the right things in this bull. And he will take this roll back that, that everyone's talking about. 
and still be a great bull uh, next year. I'm pretty excited about him. I, I want to use him in my herd. Uh, the bull's going to offer a lot of things to breeders around the world. And Jeff, not real fair to you because I let Mike take all the steam, but when you dig into the bull's proof and his linear data, are there a couple things you'd give our listeners as tidbits of the way to use this bull? A couple of the things that I like, Tim, he's, uh, they're coded as being tall, but they're not extreme, extreme tall, like some of these really high type bulls. And I, for me, that's important in my matings. I think we've got to, we've got to slow some of that. And I, I think that when I think about the mating and I look at the linears, I see the same thing in the linears as I would imagine when that mating was made. So a little bit more balanced in the frame, really strong numbers for dairy form and strength to combine with that stature. So that's what I really like. Really super wide rear udders. Uh, I think he's over four on rear udder width and that's no surprise with the mating that's there. So I think he's a bull that can be used across the board. And in fact, it's ironic we're doing this today. Our partner, Tom Kugler, he also sells semen. He was in my dooryard this morning, and we were going through the fact that he had some hellion semen available. He's going to get used in my IVF program right away. Well, that's exciting. And Jeff, I want to follow up with a question. You referenced crossover bulls. To you, what does a crossover cow or a crossover bull mean? So our listeners maybe know what thinking is. And Jeff, I'm going to interject. Mike and I just did a podcast with the boys from Comstar Holsteins. The, the conversation about crisscrossing bulls, tight bulls, production bulls, index bulls, cow family bulls, all for the past 12 decades came into their discussion just like it did yours. Tell us your vision of crossover. We are commercial dairymen first and foremost. There are no box pens at King's Ransom. Every cow, uh, we've had some 95-point cows. They live right straight in the freestyle. We've got to have cattle that compete and that perform day in and day out. So I really enjoy great type cows. But at the same token, I need my cows to be able to produce and also, for me, have the health traits, the management traits that allows them to have a long life in my herd. That's going to be fertility traits. That's going to be uh, somatic cell count. All of those management traits that we that we think of that are important. Personally, I'm trying to wrap those into all all into into one package. Sometimes it's easy to get really great health traits and ever end up with really average type. And I, I think those are the kind of cows that a lot of people aren't too interested in milking. For me, I want cows that can compete every day of the week in the show ring, but also can compete in my herd and uh, adding to my profitability. So I, I'll take you right back to the to Doc herself. To me, she was the ultimate at the time when we bought her. And I and I think that those genetics, bringing those genetics into my breeding program are, are really what I've been after. Bulls that can combine it all. And I think when you look at Hellion, like Mike said, high milk, we've talked about his type profile. He puts so much together in one package. That's, that's my kind of bull. So he'll he'll receive a lot of use in my herd for sure. Well, and Jeff, I think King's Ransom would be considered the herd that has maybe shown more progress in this area than than any others. And there are other herds, but I saw pictures of you this weekend with white pants walking around backwards in a show ring. For several years, you have had a King's Ransom Best Three Females nominated All-American competing in the top three of Best Three Female classes at the biggest shows. But what I love, Jeff, is you go to King's Ransom, you give your cows an incredible care. You're a, you're a great care facility. But like you say, your your money is made off uh, milking cows. You were just at this great New York show, one of the greatest shows in the country. Did you see members of the Doc family or the Days family or anything that were okay there? I did really admire. There was a daughter of Doc show and a milking yearling by Lambda. Kevin Zimba and some other partners owned her, but uh, that young two-year-old by Delta Lambda, she's quite a unit, a beautiful year young cow and made quite a bit in Doc's image. Uh, we happen to have a full sister to her at home that we really like as well. So we also, you know, on the Days side of things and the Dropbox side of things, it's it's really neat. Days herself just calved, recently calved a few weeks ago with her fourth calf and she looks better than ever. We're pretty excited about her future, but we did have a few sisters of her at the New York State show. We were, we had a lot of fun in some group classes. Two sisters ended up first place produce a dam. One of those sisters and her daughter were first place daughter dam. 
And uh, the three of those cows combined in the best three class to, to be second place. So we were really happy with their performance that this family has played a big, pretty big part in that edge, that side of our operation more recently. And luckily, we're going to have a few of them out at World Dairy Expo here in a few weeks. So we're looking forward. We invite our listeners to come by the King's Ransom display and see their cattle. Make sure and go look up Doc's Lambda uh, with the uh, Retso Group and Kevin Zimba and Hippin and that that crowd, Mitch Hockett. They invested a lot of money in her and they hit a home run, so that makes us thrilled. Mike, we may as well tell Jeff while we're, we're doing this publicly, we invested in embryos out of several great cows around the world when we started this, and Days was one of our picks. And Mike, I would say are one of our most interesting bulls out of our program. We've got a couple cool sons out of days, but I'm very excited about the alligator son. Think about that, Jeff. I think that's a really cool mating. I, I haven't done that mating at all myself, but I think that's a pretty exciting mating. I think that, again, the complimentary nature of that mating goes a long way. So I thought I saw the alligator son here not long ago, and he looks pretty exciting mm-hmm. to me. I think you're going to do well with him. So Mike, let's just give our listeners, as we wrap this up, couple areas we always like to tell people and jeff we sure want your input with this but part of making great cattle out of great bulls is breeding them right what bulls out there daughters of what bulls would you use hellion on mike he's going to be a bull that can get used on all the lambda daughters Uh, i think it's just lambdas work great on doc lambda is a bull right now that's up and down the road there's a there's a lot of lambdas to breed and i think uh he'll complement them well in the show world sidekick He'll add the milk to them. He'll give them some fertility help, bread tattoo. But I guess if you're going to fault him a little bit, you'd like to see a little more milk through those great cows. Those are three bulls that in the in the show side of things, you could use on Hellion on all three of those bulls and should see great results. Jeff, do you have any other thoughts on bulls? I, I, one came to mind while Mike was talking. I'll see if you bring him up. I'm going to go a little bit of a different angle. Mike mentioned a couple of mine, but, you know, we're milking a lot of game day daughters. And we really like those game days. But I think that uh, Hellion could be one heck of a mating. The the udders on the game days are nice. But I think that uh, that could be a next level kind of mating on some of those really nice game day daughters. You know, another one that I wrote down uh, as I was thinking about about this earlier was Master. Uh, You know, we see quite a few nice young Mm -hmm. Master daughters recently. And I, I think that that could really be a great mating. You know, sometimes you get asked, well, what bulls uh, you know, they need to use on, and you sometimes you leave one out. I would think Master would be an ideal cross on uh, on Hellion because of the uh, again, he's gonna he's gonna put milk, he's gonna put gonna give you some uh, set to the leg and some traits that would help push that mating along. And I think Master would give you this, you know, all the add the style to him. So I, I think it's a great mating. So my bull, which neither here nor there, but to, along the same line as Tattoo, I think Crush Time or Crush a Bull, those kind of bulls, this bull could be really neat. And Jeff, you've you've bred some really nice ones by those bulls. And and I think that they could cross well because of the milk and strength. You are right. I, that's for sure. I think I, the Crush Bulls for sure. Yep. And I'm disappointed neither of you guys as great a market as, you're, as you are. My answer when they ask me how to use Hellion, I say use them on anything that's in heat. And even if they're not in heat, use them. Isn't that the best theory, guys? Yes. <laughs> so, Jeff, we're going to give you one yeah. last chance as we wrap this conversation up. It's been a great discussion with you two guys. Uh, we're very excited about the bull. I think he's going to get tremendous use as a mating sire. Jeff, you want to leave our listeners with any final thoughts? You know, Tim, I, I think the one thing that I think about, and I, I think it's it's almost straightforward, but sometimes we don't think about this. I go back to a few of the things that I said, but... When you consider using bulls like this, I think going back to the cow family, not just looking at the numbers that are there, thinking about the matings that were made, the cow families that are behind these bulls, I think when they really make sense, I can put a whole lot more confidence in the bulls that I use that result from those kind of matings. And, you know, we've already talked about it, but I think that this combination of these two cow families and these sires makes a whole lot of sense. Jeff, I would say one place I wanted to go with the D family at King's Ransom. You know, I've been a sire analyst in my previous world for 25, 30 years. I came to King's Ransom 20 years ago and looked at Cletus Dora, some of those great D family members that are all part of Dropbox's and Days' family. Again, it's not that this family just came together in the past couple of years. This family is, you know, 30 years old, you know, 10 generations deep. 
of this great crossing. And I think not just on Dropbox's side, but on Doc's side as well. Well, for sure. You can you can run both of those families back 15 plus, I think. And uh, makes me realize that I've been in the business longer than I want to realize. But uh, but I remember working on some of the earlier early days of these pedigrees, for sure. Well, it's been a pleasure to have Mike Duckett and Jeff King on to talk about the new Showbox Sires Release Bowl 744HO17425 Hellion a bull that will be released through Select Sires, be uh, available globally through Select slash Worldwide Sires. Information on him will be available on certainly the Select Sires website, but on the Showbox Sires website as well. We hope you'll come visit us at World Dairy Expo. King's Ransom will have a nice group of cattle there. Duncan Holsteins and Showbox Sires will have our booth in the barn with our cattle. You'll see a lot of daughters, sisters to our bulls and our program. And we thank you for listening to this episode of the evolution of the great cow and the release of our next Showbox Sires bull.